Just before his best friend's wedding, the life of a Chicago writer becomes crazy when his best friend guesses his new book story is based on his bride's fervent past. Hmm, man. Sounds scandalous, don't it? It sounds like the best man. <laughs> you are correct. Oh, 1999's The Best Man. Yeah. <laughs> Here are 10 interesting facts about the movie, The Best Man. Number one, the film was written and directed by Malcolm D. Lee and produced by 40 Acres of a Mule Filmworks with his cousin, you guessed it. Spike Lee. Spike Lee. So this was Malcolm's directorial debut and Malcolm stated that there was a hunger out there for movies about the black American experience that didn't have anything to do with the inner city or drugs or violence. I wasn't seeing myself or my friends represented on film there was something missing. I could I could really see that, right? right? Because we want stories that resonate with us, and I think that everyone's black experience can be very, very different. Right. You had The Best Man, of course, mm -hmm. The Wood, mm -hmm. Brown Sugar, right. Soul Food, yeah. you know, all those type of movies where yeah. Yeah. they did show that different um, experience yeah. for us, so... So did you know that the original title for this movie was My Homeboy's Wedding? Yeah, I don't think that would have held up over there. It would not. It would not. I mean, you say homeboy and homegirl still for some reason. Shut I'm up. Sure cut that out. <laughs> my, you leave me in my vernacular alone. Leave me alone. Number two. So the role of Harper that is played by Tay Diggs, mm -hmm. that role was originally meant for Lorenz Tate. Okay, Lorenz yeah. Tate. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, during this time, or maybe fortunately for Tay Diggs, uh, <laughs> Lorenz actually had another project that he was working on. Um, now, here's something really interesting. Honestly, Tay Diggs probably should be thanking Lorenz Tate because he also was supposed to star in Brown Sugar. <laughs> and Tay Diggs got that part. So yeah. it, I always find it so very interesting when you find out uh, people who were supposed to be on the cast or people who auditioned um, because N Nicole Ari Parker, she was another that had auditioned. She was auditioning for the role of Shelby. Tracy Ellis Ross, Michael Jai White, hmm. um, they also had auditioned for various roles. Shoot, even Regina King. I okay. mean, we got a Regina, Regina Hall, but just not Regina King. So, yeah, yeah I think that's pretty neat. I always think that's interesting. I'm pretty sure Michael Jai White would have been Lance. Oh, yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I could definitely see that. Definitely. Number three, Will and Jada again. <laughs> So Malcolm Lee stated that he initially wrote The Best Man for Will and Jada Pinkett Smith. I could see that too, though, honestly. Yeah, what role would Will play, you think? Oh, definitely Harper. Harper? Yeah, 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 because you have to consider at this time, uh, he was already, a, he was a big name at this point, right? Okay. So you need, you need yeah, that starring role, yeah, right? Yeah, that's true. And then the spunkiness of Nia Long's character, that definitely would have been Jada Pinkett. I think, I think. Yeah, because that would be like a starring role. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because even though, you know, I feel like, yes, they had Sanai Lathan in the movie, but she, was, she felt like an add-on character. There wasn't a lot of character development there for her. Mm -hmm. uh, we see her in the beginning, but then we don't see her again until the end of the movie. So I I would think he probably would have wanted to utilize her for something bigger, considering her name. So Right, right. Come to think of it, I've never seen Will and Jada in a movie together. Oh, I haven't either. Yeah, you can't even think of it. Oh, wow, okay. Hmm. Have they been starred in a TV show together, maybe? What, did she ever make an appearance on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? Not that I can recall. If you guys know, let us know in the comments. Yeah, let us know about that if we're missing something. Yeah, That's interesting I, I can't think of them together at all on a show yeah. or a movie, anything. That would have been great. Yeah, yeah. I think they would have done well with that. Yeah, and the good thing is, J.D. Pinkett Smith did link up with Malcolm Lee mm -hmm. later on when he filmed Girls Trip. That's true. Yes, yeah. Girls Trip. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Number four... So when Regina Hall auditioned for her role, she ended up walking out at the end. Okay, must have been pretty bad. <laughs> okay, so 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 recall the character that she played. Candy. She, she plays a dancer, and she shows up to the bachelor uh, party, and she's a dancer, so she's got to dance. Regina Hall can't dance. She yeah yeah. Okay. So so Regina okay. stated. I remember I was in school with this girl who was like, all you got to do is smack your ass. 
So I went into the audition and did that. I remember they stopped the music and said, can you do anything else? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said, thank you, took my coat and left. Oh, girl, said, look, I got to, no, you know what? Thank you for having me, but I'm just, I'm going to head out. <laughs> yeah. Of course, we see the result of that, the end result being she got a call from her agent just basically saying they really want you for the role. They're even willing to hire a, a choreographer for you. So it's like, you know, don't let that be the thing that keeps you from this role. Because first of all, the body, the body, she was stunning. She really was. She really, really was. Think back to the scene and she makes her little appearance and she puts that hip out and it looks so awkward and that's why awkward. it makes yeah, sense. Like, okay, what's going on here? She's like, it went a different way in my head, but when I did it, it was like, aha, uh -huh. okay. Yeah, and <laughs> just thinking about it now, they wanted to have her in a role and right. audition for this part. The part was only a few minutes. Yeah. So I wonder if they'd actually had a bigger role written for her, just okay. maybe to be the only dancer there. But you remember it was like two or three other ladies that came in. Yeah, it was two other ladies there. Yeah. When she came in, she just did one little dance and then went over to Merch. Right, right, and right. That was it. You yeah. Know, other than her talking to Merch afterwards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she can act. And it really probably, I feel like, set the stage for other movies that she did. Even though, you know, like, it seemed like she really kind of took the comedy route. Yeah, it worked for her. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I think that was a great introduction. Number five. Oh, Quentin. <laughs> Terrence Howard. Yeah, Terrence Howard's performance mm. in The Best Man actually earned him a job offer with John Singleton. Okay. But he didn't accept the offer until 2005's Hustle and Flow yeah. and Four Brothers. Okay, okay. Now, for Hustle and Flow, John Singleton was only a producer on that movie. Right, yeah. But still, he helped get Terrence into that role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, listen, he played that role. He played Quentin. Every scene with him, this guy, I was like, I want to choke him. Why are you stirring up mess? Yeah, instigating. The whole time. <laughs> I mean, you know, he had a nice little redeeming factor that, that happens at the end. But still, I was like, bro, yeah, this is this is definitely early Lucius, like, scheming, conniving friend. We all have that friend, right? But he's that friend. So, number six. So, I want you to recall the scene where it's after the bachelor party and Harper goes over to Jordan's apartment, okay. right? So they're sitting on the couch and she sees the state that he's in and she realizes, oh, you know, Lance found out about what happened with, you know, his bride-to-be. And she like smacks him. But thanks to you, miss, I want an exclusive. I got my ass whooped. I almost got thrown from a fucking building because of your ass. So thank you, Jordan. And listen, it wasn't like no little, ah, she went full on, bam, right? It's more of a hit than a It's slap. a hit. She didn't, that wasn't a slap. That was a hit. So apparently that was, that was her improvising. This was not planned. Tay Diggs didn't know at all. Go back and watch that scene and look at his reaction. And he's like, whoa, that look on his face. It was so real because it was real. Yeah. She, he he was angry though. He's like, she hit me hard. Like, why would she do that? In a 2018 interview with TV One, Tay Diggs said this. She really she slapped the <laughs> out of me, like for real. <laughs> you get you get a moment where I go woo, and I stayed in it. It was so loud, and I I said, Tay, are you okay? And he's like, Yeah, I, I'm good. I was pissed. I was like, I'm never gonna work with her again. You know, how unprofessional. Um, and then when I saw it on screen, I mean, you know, after, after, after that day, we were cool. Number seven. So during Lance and Mia's wedding reception, mm -hmm. the party broke out into the electric slide while Candy by Cameo played as the credits began to roll. However, the actors thought they were gonna do the regular electric slide. Oh, electric boogie. Electric boogie. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they were surprised to hear Candy by Cameo come on instead okay. of the electric boogie. Listen, I think that that song was a better choice because... Yeah, Malcolm Lee thinks so also. <laughs> he stated that he was not a fan of the electric boogie song. Oh, well, he'd heard um, it a lot. Yeah, it's, it's a thing of it's 
you hear it a lot, especially in um, you know, growing up. Yeah. In the eighties, late eighties, early nineties. Yeah. It's like ugh. every every barbecue, every school dance, everybody's mm-hmm. doing it. No, I think I think that candy was a great choice. Uh, and I'm sure that it inspired uh, many wedding goers to break out and dance with this song. So, yeah, yeah. it was a great moment. Look, even Regina Hall, she looked kind of smooth. <laughs> yeah. But, but so now Lathan had to teach her the electric slide. She did. But you notice that she's standing right beside her. And looking <laughs> down at her feet. Like, okay. She's counting. She's like, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Number eight. So you know no video would be complete if we didn't mention the soundtrack. We're always going to mention the soundtrack. Always. Uh, as long as it's a good soundtrack. Nine times out of ten, the stuff we're watching has a great soundtrack, I think. Yeah. Um, and, of course, this soundtrack is no exception. Definitely. So we've got uh, music from Maxwell. Let's not play the game. Let's not play the game, yeah. We've got The Roots. What you want. We've got Bob Marley and Lauren Hill. Turn the lights down low. My favorite rendition of this song. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And then, of course, we have um, that collaboration between Genuine, RL, Tyrese, and Case. The best man I can be. Yes. It's like certified banger, right? It's one of those songs that banger? you Banger? <laughs> I'm old. Tell him, y'all tell him A to leave me alone. certified banger? Tell him leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. Doggone it. No, but for real, for real. Doggone it. It is... <laughs> Y'all, he trying to come for me. I didn't send for you. By golly. <laughs> Bet you by golly, wow. Get out of here. <laughs> no, but for real, this soundtrack actually went platinum. Like, it's it's super, super memorable. Mm-hmm. And I really just kind of feel like a lot of the, the best R&B songs that came out during this period were attached to movies. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, just like we mentioned before in the previous videos. Yep. And the, of course, I own the DVD, as you guys know. He does. The DVD has Maxwell's video, Let's Not Play the Game. And also, it has RL, yeah. Case, Tyrese, Genuine song, The Best Man I Can Be On. So the videos are there. The videos are there. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. So, hmm. oh. Genuine, you know, Genuine is a dancer. He dances, he dances down, honey. What was that spin? How did he do that spin in those Timberland boots? He must have had a quarter or something on the back heel. Something. He, I'm like, How he did, did it twice. Tens. Yes. I don't know. The man is magic. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine. The film had a budget of nine million dollars, which they made back on opening day, mm-hmm. and had a box office total of thirty-four point five million dollars. Okay, they did well. Yeah. Yeah. Did well, and especially being um, Malcolm Lee's first film. Oh, undoubtedly, yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's great. It's a great showing for him, um, and it shows definitely that the talent runs in the family. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think this is also probably a great segue to our final fact number ten. Uh, just kind of thinking about the impact and legacy of the film. You know, we have our theater re- release, but when it's released to video or DVD. <laughs> It developed a cult following, for sure. And I think that the evidence of that would be the fact that they went and made a sequel to it freaking 14 years later. And then we also have the TV show that came out on Peacock, The Best Man Final Chapters. So, you know, definitely the appeal is still there. It's definitely a movie that holds up. Mm -hmm. It, it, It was able to withstand the test of time. It was really great us having... Uh, another opportunity to to see something like this. Um, yes, we have Lance, who's an athlete, but we also have Jordan, who's a BET executive. BET so, executive. Yeah, we we have Harper, who who's an author. You know, mm-hmm. so so I think it's really great that we can show how multifaceted as a community we are. So, what about memorable scenes for you? The scene where Merch uh, and Candy, he's. Just drunk out of his mind. <laughs> oh, goes, yeah. He goes, do you love me? Oh, yeah. I'm Candy like, loves you, daddy. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, this guy. He gone. Yeah. He's real gone. <laughs> yeah. Another scene would be, you know, Quentin. Don't you think she'd be well within her right? It's karma, baby. to do that. 
Whose hand is it? A handsome gentleman playing like myself. I'm gonna pimp this baby right here. You know how many single honeys be at weddings? It's about to be a whole aces in that baby, honey. This shit is about to be ignorant off the hook. Luke dances. Luke <laughs> dances. Stole a lot of scenes in this movie. Yeah. And so any scene with him, of course, was hilarious. Yeah. What about you? I would have to say the fight scenes. With a kiss to her frontal lobe. Hey, smile, Daddy. It's the bachelor party. You f me. Oh, shit. Yo, 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 Gonna do this? Hell yeah, I'm gonna do this shit. No, you ain't. You're gonna marry you a beautiful woman tomorrow. I felt like the fight scene was very well done. Mm -hmm. um, it felt it felt real. Yeah. It, it was a it was a real reaction, and that's what we want, of course, you know. And this is this is when I felt okay about Quentin because he comes over and he's trying to talk him down, and he's like, "You don't want to do this." You have your life ahead of you. You have a beautiful woman waiting for you. God does not want this. And I was like, okay, see, Terrence Howard, you know how to redeem yourself in a movie. You got it. You got it. So I really enjoyed that. I thought that was great. Any final thoughts about the movie? You know, this was a movie that I was not able to watch when it came out. But I think that I really appreciate that because I probably saw this um, a couple years after I graduated from high school. I think that having an adult perspective really changes how you view the movie. Mm -hmm. So us watching it again, and I still felt like, yes, this is a great movie. Well, that's all we have for you guys today. We hope that you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. When was the last time you went to a wedding? When we got married? <laughs> <laughs> You mean the last time I attended a wedding? Sure. I got, remember, I got locked out. I got locked out of the church.